You found them? No. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Alternative Small Holding. I'm Jess with the Beardy Dude and Rue. And Beardy Dude has a day of work today. And um, obviously we had to educate Rue, so we're all here at the plot. And it is clean up day. It is get stuff done day. Before that happens though, it's cook some food time. I'm starving, I don't know about you. Starving Marvin. So, we are going to have some of our own eggs with some veggie sausages, um, fried tomato, mushrooms, um, beans. That's what we're going to want, was beans. So I'm going to do that and give us some fuel, hopefully, for getting on and getting this work done. It is a gorgeous day. In the greenhouse here, it's 34.3, which is a bit warm for me, but I'm sure I'll manage. Um, but outside, it is a beautiful blue sky. Hello. <laughs> gorgeous blue sky and it's about 19 degrees which hello focus on me focus there we go which is a nice working temperature so hopefully we will get lots done today what we are actually planning on doing is weeding and we are going to start sorting this whole plot for winter so our autumn winter planting crops and also for the big move around I'll reveal all about that in a minute. All right, while they're cooking, we're going to walk directly into the sun. I'm sorry for how bright it is. And I'm going to show you our plants. As you know, we moved this greenhouse from the old plot. And it's just basically stayed there all over summer. Excuse me, beardy dude. And so our plan now is that we are going to move that completely. The plan was to keep it on that plot, but we're going to bring it up here. Where that curbstone is, let's see if I can get over this fence. There we go. Where this is, the greenhouse is going to go here. So this lemon balm is going to be taken out because we've got another couple of them and to be honest, it's getting out of control. So the greenhouse will go here. Then that would be like a shady growing area for um, brassicas because to be honest, I think it was too shady for the tomatoes. They've produced well. And if you follow us on Instagram, you know that we've got loads of them. Those two green barrows have definitely produced. We've got a freezer full and we've got loads ripening all the time. So that hasn't been a problem really, but I think here for an actual growing site, it was too shady. So now all the tomatoes are out and the beetroot's out from down here as well, it's just one leaf left. Um, we can actually start prepping this area. So this was going to be where the polytunnel was going to go, but instead we're taking out this bed all the way along. So they're all going because I don't like raised beds. Um, this raised bed though, we are going to keep this one. Um, this is what we had the garlic in last year and now it's growing beans and chickpeas and dwarf beans here which are producing lovely beans so the empty plot will come down to this rhubarb so that'll all be empty ground so the greenhouse can be there and we'll have another open bed here and up the top in the junkyard up here we have all of the wood that we've collected that we need for the projects underneath there is also a shed so the shed will be put up here um, in the shelter and then all of this metal work is for the polytunnel and the polytunnel has been in progress now for uh, just over a year um, but we're not actually going to have it on this site at all we've got we're going to have the two greenhouses on here and then the polytunnel is going to go over there You cooking? So this plot, which is the half plot, sorry, um, and has basically been stored for the greenhouse and potatoes this year. This side is going to be the polytunnel and some beds. And this side is going to be a cut flower garden. And then I'm going to create a couple of new fruit beds as well. So I'm taking cuttings today of um, some currant bushes that I want to put over there, some red currants, which were really, really nice. And we're going to move all the raspberries around. 
we are going to make a path that goes straight up the middle of our plot because the edge has been fenced and then having to walk all the way on the side. Is what a bee, baby? Yes, that's a bee. Hey, little bee. Where are you going? So I've drawn up a big plan now and there is a lot to do but to be honest we're more productive in the colder months anyway we're not really big fans of the heat let's see how these sausages doing so so during the autumn and probably winter and then early spring we'll be changing these two plots considerably the baby plot will now be fenced in because we're picking up a load of free trellis, um, like wooden trellis, which is not in great condition, but it will mean that we've got a really quick, easy fence that we can stake in. And also I can grow some um, flowering plants up there next year. Paper paints are a bit precarious. <laughs> Service room. Is that okay? This is the best place she feels every time. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> barbecue at the plot every day? Yes. Well, it's not barbecue, is it? Yeah, happy mummy. I love cooking. I love cooking on stoves. Sorry. Stop being so tall. <laughs> Stopping in a palumper as well, bobbing. Okay, <laughs> so um, this will keep us going for a little while and then if we're still here tonight, we are going to pick more corn, some baby potatoes and um, we've got some salad and that and we'll have that for tea, won't we? Yes. Yum yum. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna go eat mine now. And you? Well, we've been fueled, haven't we? Yeah. Probably a little bit too much for mid-afternoon, to be honest. Got that slight food coma feeling going on, but that bush needs dealing with. So we're gonna take that out first. We've got some of the green, well, we've got all of the greenhouse base here, but it's actually going to be more over that way rather than down here. But it gives us a good idea of the size anyway. It's actually much bigger than I remembered. Um, it's gonna be a good growing space and things like cucumbers and that don't like really hot heat, so at this end of it being a bit more shaded then hopefully we can grow more cucumbers and that in there and then the little one can be for chilies and peppers and the polytunnel will be for the tomatoes the lemon brahm lemon brahm the lemon brahm broke the fork we've had this fork for how many years 15 15 years and it is no closer to being out <laughs> Stabbed it with the spade, broke the fork, quit. There is a wheelbarrow full of all the leaves, but I'm not going to use those for anything because to be honest, it's the younger, bigger leaves that are better. See these ones, it's all flowering. Something tells me we've not seen the end of this plant. I'll just have to keep it in check. found the shed the shed's under there and we moved all the wood well dudes moved all the wood since that huge lunch I seem to be suffering from um I can't be botheredness. Um, this bean arch is lovely. So, I'm coming back down to the bottom. I think we're going to stick up some more potatoes now and get on with some more jobs. But first, I may just have a little sit down and a rest because we really need to enjoy the spaces that we grow in. 
and it's nice to just sit down and relax sometimes isn't it i think sometimes we think of these places as just work and if we get to that it's a chore you okay yes coffee Ooh. no we can't have any coffee oh. we're out of gas <laughs> Boom. there's no cooking on gas today well not this evening anyway um are you going to go and try and procure some Dude's going to go and try there, 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 there. Dude is going to try procure some gas, which means that we can have tea up here. And um, once the sun comes over those trees again, it'll be a bit warmer because it has gone quite chilly. So I'm going to get my hoodie. I'm going to crack open these beans. These are Greek gigantes. And inside are these big butter beans, and they're just lovely. We had some in the curry last night and they, to be honest, they needed cooking a bit longer. They were still quite firm, but um, very, very nice. So I'm going to get a drink and sit down for a bit and then we'll join you back for some work shortly. Maybe a bit noisy in the background, I'm sorry, because it is rush hour and there is a road nearby. Um, Bearded Dude and Rue have gone to find some more gas and our plot neighbours on both sides have gone so I thought that we would sit down and have a chat about things that we are planning on the plot to plant in autumn and winter and changes that I want to make generally so the first thing is I want the plot to be more personal it's um, we got this big plot, our main growing space now, we got that in um, at the end of October last year. I had just got out of hospital because I had a um, burst ovary, a hemorrhaged ovary, and um, I was on a ban from doing any work for quite a while. So we didn't get any structural work done before we had to put in things like our onions and garlic and broad beans, things like that. So we just basically worked with what we had, made a few minor changes, but mostly just worked with the layout that we had we found that that is actually very unproductive for us and the way that we want to work because we spend a lot of time here not just as a growing space but it's more of a recreational space we like to relax here at home our garden space is tiny and um, we we have a lovely neighbor we really do but we have no privacy from anybody there and also we've got the chickens and if anybody knows anything about chickens they don't have any control over what comes out their backside so um it's not pleasant all the time so here we like to relax and although obviously it's noisy in rush hour <laughs> as it is now it is generally a very very peaceful calm place and it's not busy we've only got like 11 people on the whole site so the land that's rented here isn't very like it's not a big allotment site let's put it that way so often when we're here we're by ourselves and we can just relax and um, obviously that ends up with a bit of procrastination because like now i'm just sitting on my backside rather than getting any work done but um it's nice to be able to do that here so i want to make it more personal i want to make it more beautiful i want to have a little like arched pergola i want lots more flowers I want it to be more productive for what we need and that was one of my goals for this year was to grow more of what we eat now i think we have achieved that in a way but i'm going to do a video that runs over our goals that we had for the year and how we've actually done for meeting them but areas that we've fallen down on i can tell you now is things like salads still um and obviously the tomatoes got loads of blight now they have actually ripened like i said so all is not lost but i want it to have more designated spaces and to bring the full plot and the half plot together so that they're actually productive together and i want more fruit spaces but not for the fruits necessarily that we have because we've got lots and lots of black currants and we really don't eat that many of them at all and the black currants we do use to make like a cordial that is very nice in gin um, but other than that don't really use them so to have like five black currant bushes is a total waste of our space so I'm going to do cuttings of the red currant bushes and grow a whole row of those the raspberries we're moving the strawberries we're propagating from their runners and creating more of them 
and then I want a big cut flower patch and I'm doing this for my friend's wedding but I also want to do it for myself because I do want to have more flowers at home because if you can bring it back with you the days that you can't get here on those rainy days it's really nice to have those flowers with you at home isn't it? Some things have worked really really well. Um, this greenhouse for example is the first structure that we've ever really had in our growing space that has actually worked for us. We put it in a good spot, no one else on the site actually has their greenhouse at the end of the plot. We all have it hidden under the trees which doesn't seem to make any sense. So although it is a bit exposed here the site doesn't have a lot of wind and so it seems to be okay. We'll see when we go through November because November in the UK here is probably where we get our worst storms although we have had a lot of storms over summer still. Um, it just seems to have worked for us. We grew loads of peppers which ripen really quickly and um, it's just a nice place because it's down the bottom here that we can relax and chill out and then if it rains we've got shelter. So it works really well. And next year with the extra greenhouse and the polytunnel we'll have more space for relaxing and doing that as well. So I just want to enjoy it more. I've had a lot of illness basically from October up until now and it's only very, very recently that I've actually felt a little bit more on the ball and tried to make videos again. Um, but this place does help. I must admit we have let it go a little bit, but we are getting back on it now and we're going to be planting loads of things for autumn and overwintering basically. Now the first thing obviously that we're going to plant is we've got our last lot of dwarf beans in, which are French beans. Like, um, I think you call them pole beans say in America, but they're like dwarf beans, bush beans, bush beans, that's what you call them. And um, they're doing really well. And I need to clear a bed because we have our autumn planted onions to go in. Now you, here in the UK, we have two times that we tend to plant them, same for garlic, which is autumn, which is say October, November, and then in spring, say March time. I prefer to do them in autumn because that means that the bed is clear earlier and I can use it for something else if I want to. With garlic I find that the autumn and overwintering garlic does better because the cold snap helps the bulb to split so you get more cloves. So if we're planting those, we've got char to go in and the other day I picked up a greenhouse heater for free. So this greenhouse is going to be used for a late crop of cucumbers. The cucumbers were really late to start this year. I thought I wasn't going to get any. And in the end, I sowed some um, ones from, there's a shop here in the UK called Lidl. And they sell like really cheap seeds. Like you can get like five packets for one pound. And they were a 29p packet of seed or one of the five for a pound. And they are gorgeous, like really dense, not very watery, don't go bitter, just really good cucumbers. I've not even really watered them at all. And they're just, they're romping away. We must have had like 30, 40 cucumbers off these four plants and we love them but i'm trying to get a late crop of them in there because cucumbers only have so much life in them so i'm going to try and grow some of those until it gets really cold um what else we doing? i've got chard that's going um i've got some flowers this is going to be really noisy going past now uh, we've got some flowers that i'm sowing now and um Broad beans, broad beans we're going to be sowing in October, so they'll be planted too. I'm going to be sowing some pak choy and some winter lettuces and radicchio and mustard leaves, things like that. Um, I did actually sow a whole load of overwintering brassicas and I let them die. Don't judge me. <laughs> I am not a master gardener by a long shot. And also my leeks, I completely forgot about those and they dried out and shriveled up. So. Uh, we have potatoes that we planted in July that are in pots and they are our Christmas potatoes and when those plants die back I'll just cut the homes off which is the stalks and leave them in the pots move them into the greenhouse so they'll just stay dry and store in there until we need them and then we'll do our usual Christmas day harvest which we did last year and it was great fun so we'll be doing that again um, in a minute I'm going to go and dig up some potatoes which are our main crop ones which are Valor we had some of them on Saturday when we had a barbecue here and they looked like they had been really slugged. So hopefully they're okay and I'll get up as many of them as I can today. What else are we doing? Um, all sorts. I need to think about it some more. 
I am planning next year's tomatoes and I did say to myself, you know, you don't need 120 tomato plants. Look what happens when they all go down to blight. You've got masses of green tomatoes sitting all over your house and to be honest, they are sitting all over our house right now. But I received a lovely letter in the post today which had loads of tomato seeds in it and I've been sending, someone else is sending me some more from America and I'm a sucker for tomatoes. Now that I can eat them, this is the first year, guys, that I've ever been able to eat tomatoes in about 25 years. And I am savouring every single one of them. And on my Instagram, there is a post that shows my top eight, I think, of the year. Once we, all of them have ripened and I can get a better judgement, I will do my top ten and I'll do video about it. I'll take photographs of them because they probably won't all be there at the time, but I can talk you through them. Um, yeah, we're doing a lot of planning. A lot of planning everything's going to move around it will all flow better it'll be more productive and i want flowers everywhere absolutely everywhere so yeah lots going on lots of plans looking forward to making it our own and hopefully with the plans that we have it will cook down on some of the work next year in terms of weeds and management so that we can actually enjoy it a bit more but i want to make a nice space for us to relax into and um yeah that's it so i'm gonna go now and i'm going to go and dig up some potatoes i really should be weeding the bed for the onions to go in but that's i'm just knowing no. i just can't be bothered to do that today so we're gonna do potatoes instead so let's go and rescue some of those i was just walking past what was the radish and turnip bed and I thought I'll pull them all out, some of them are going to seed. But look at the size of these radishes that have been coming out of here. Look at them, they're like beetroots. So I got carried away. I was going to do potatoes, I promise, but um, instead I've cleared this bed. And that was radishes, baby beetroots, which never came to anything. Turnips, we got one, and some weeds. Now there are still some dandelion roots and thistle roots I need to dig out, but um, generally it's a clean bed. One down, gosh knows how many to go. So these potatoes I'm about to dig up are a main crop variety called Valor. They are apparently blight resistant and we've never had any blight on them. Traditionally, they have been the potato that we've gone to for our main crop because they have the best flavor. Now you can also get Salpe Mira, which is blight intolerant, but I think the flavor is not very nice at all. So Valor is for us the best potato but they haven't done great this year. Our first earliest, second earliest did fantastic. We've got absolutely loads of those. These have usually been scab resistant, blight resistant. They haven't had any slug damage. Everything that is a potato problem, these haven't had. Whereas this year, it seems that they haven't grown very well at all. Whereas usually they're like big, like jacket potatoes, roasting potatoes, um, baking potatoes. This year they're small and the slugs are after them. So I'm going to take some of them out and see how they're faring. Hopefully we'll get something out of them, but um, it also means that we can start clearing the ground there and planning for next year. So I've taken up most of this row and one from the next row, one from the next row and one from the last row. And they're all like this. You see? Full of holes. slug ridden, horrible things. So I'm not going to waste my energy on that today. I am going to clear the salad bed. I'm going to get harvest from there and then I think we're just going to go home. So let's go and see what we can find in the salad bed. Hopefully something better than these things. Now I need to get this bed cleared quite soon because this is where the broad beans are going to be planted. And we have quite a lot of beetroot in here. I 
fairy tale, aren't they? And these ones down this end are de Chigua, so they're the ones that when you slice them they've got the, the rings of light and dark. And they've gone to a really nice size, I'm pleased with those. And we do have some Crosby's Egyptian ones in here too, but they're further up here. Let me show you the leaves on these Crosby's Egyptians, they're gorgeous. Can you see how metallic and iridescent these are? So beautiful. Some of them haven't done as well, and to be honest, there is a lot of um, dandelions and weed in here, and it is battling with the chard that is going over now as well. But um, these are lovely. I'm going to take this. Give it to me. Oh. And Crosby's Egyptian only grow small, but they're a really, really dense, lovely flavour, and I'm going to save the leaves off this one too and eat those. I got all of these beetroots out of this bed. Some of them are more sizeable and some of them are like perfect for baby pickles. But there's a lot here. I've also cleared another bed mostly. Oh they're back. Obviously this needs weeding through. There's a whole row of dandelions there but I've taken everything out here. I've left this chard although it has gone to flower because we can still eat the leaves so they can stay and I'm leaving the white chard too so we can still pick that. Oh, you brought me a donut. Well, I already had two. You've already had two? Yeah, but I'll leave the rest for you too. Okay, so one for me, one for daddy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Right, so we didn't get all the potatoes up. I need to talk to you about it. He's just got back. Um, but we have cleared two beds. We've got a big beetroot harvest. All the radishes are out, which look like beetroots. I'll show you in a minute. Ooh. They're going to be too big to use because they've gone woody. I might try and roast a few. You can try roasted radishes. I'm sure you're really happy about yes. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you for joining us today. We are Alternative Small Holding here in the heart of the UK. We love sharing our journey with you, <laughs> our lovely friends Sorry. on YouTube. So um, thank you. And we'll be back again soon because I need to film the tour, don't I? I need to do a September tour. September tour. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you very soon. Take care. I hope you're getting lots done and the weather's cooled down enough so you can actually be productive now. Yeah. Bye-bye.